Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of Draft to Glory. And let's get right into this because before I can begin simming our next season, I need to talk about trading and its place within this series. Now, I mentioned early on with this series in general that I thought trading would eventually become a part of this series, and it has, of course, in the prior offseason, trading certain players to recoup a couple of draft picks. And then the top comment from the last episode, not to turn this into Bork's Battalion, talked about using the trading block to get rid of those players, or just any player in general, that we don't necessarily need anymore. And that's, you know, it was a very popular comment. And you guys know I like to take your feedback into consideration, because after all, this series is for you guys, and I want your input to be there. But there was another comment that also made a really good point, and that is, if I miss on a pick, right? Say it's the fourth round, and I take someone who's AHL potential when there was a you know medium top nine on the board. The fact that I'm allowed to trade that guy means that it's not exactly a punishment if I were to make a mistake and draft somebody that I shouldn't have, because at the very least, I could get a fourth round pick right back. I could maybe even get a third round pick, depending on what team I try to trade with. So, despite the fact that I think trading does have to be a part of this series, I'm not 100% set on what I want to do throughout the rest of this series. So, I'll tell you what. Because the comment in the last episode was so popular about using... The trading block we are going to do that in this episode but as far as what i do heading into next episode or for the rest of the series i'm not entirely sure i'm not entirely sure i do think it is a very fair point that i can simply you know trade away someone who is a miss in the draft and get that pick right back a fair compromise might be and this wouldn't be using the trading block but say, for example, we miss out on a fourth round guy, say the rule is we're only allowed to trade for a fourth round pick in return, maybe even a fifth round pick in return, you know, a, a round or two lower than where we actually took that player. There's still a lot of room to figure things out as we go along with this series. The good thing is, of course, I mean, the players that we're trading away, right, Mac, Walter McIntyre, he's 25, he's not going to pan out, we're not going to get too much for him. It's the same thing with Hey Duke, who just isn't going to pan out. Goring isn't a bad player to have, but, I mean, that's the thing, it's like, do we want to keep him to keep the AHL strong? I wasn't sure whether or not to actually put him on the trading block or not. It was a pretty tough decision because how good do we want the Hershey Bears to be the better they are the better for the team's development if we were to somehow make the playoffs the Bears are coming off what I believe was their best season yet as well so it, it is tough it is tough there are still a lot of decisions that we can make in regards to how we handle this series but to start off this episode we will go with the trading block idea. If I don't get any offers for the players that I've put up there, then simply put, probably towards the trade deadline, I might get rid of certain players like a Walter McIntyre to make room for other players at the AHL level. But, I mean, that team is set up to compete, no doubt about that. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I hope you can't. It is another thunderstorm rolling in. So I am a little bit anxious about recording at the moment too because I don't know if the rain hitting off my air conditioner in the window is going to pick up too much either. I have no idea. Hell, the power could go out and I'd be the only one to ever hear this. But yeah, it'll be an interesting episode. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure what's going to happen, but that's good. That's good for me. But I mean, this team getting back into the episode and focusing in here, I mean, weeding, and Ken James is the top pairing. The fact that Stephen Quirk is an 89 overall elite goalie. Who knows what this season will bring. But I think I've cleared all of that up. 
let's get in to the sim. We'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. Of course, that is always the hope. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll actually get any offers, especially, too, with the way I set up the trade block. Because otherwise, if I were to set it up saying, oh, you know, if I... The, the terms of the type of player you want to give away, they're so broad that I'd be sitting here getting offers for players that I don't want to get rid of, which is why I don't often use the trading block. But it, it is an interesting debate for how much. I mean, there are some of you guys that want me to just go out and get as many picks as possible and trade for firsts. And then there are other people that don't want me to trade whatsoever and would prefer to just have me release players that I don't actually need, as of course Owen Lane goes down to a concussion in the first game of the season. It's a fine balance, and like I said, for a series, for a series that I kind of had planned out for a bit, but it was a spur-of-the-moment decision to actually have this be a series on NHL 17 as opposed to waiting until 18 it's, I, I don't know, it's just one of those things for me where so many different good ideas that I had in my own head, I mean, as cocky as that sounds, like, oh, I had such great ideas, but, you know, how I envision the series, and then you factor in some, you know, very, I guess, reasonable, logical comments from you guys that could, you know, also put this series in an even better place. It's tough to balance all that out, but that is the beauty of what we're doing here with this series. So I try to take everything into consideration, and you guys, I'm sure if you've been around for a while, you've seen it. Sometimes I'll go forward with an idea, and then it turns out, well, you know, that might not have been the best idea. So we backtrack, and we try to make the most of it. As it is right now, the whole trading block idea isn't exactly working out just yet i mean we'll give it time like i said but it's tough too because do we get rid of the players that we don't necessarily need do we how competitive do we want to keep the team down in hershey in particular it's it is tough to say it is tough to say but we are getting to that point in this series where playoffs aren't exactly out of the question for the caps and they might not be too far out of the question for the bears so, it's just a matter, too, of trying to avoid pick hoarding. It's a whole deal. But, like I said, I'm enjoying the hell out of this series. You guys have clearly been enjoying the hell out of this series. It's been a lot of fun. It is, essentially, at this point, my top priority as far as what videos I make. This series is above Rebuilding Hockey Town, above A Nation United on the priority list. Just because the support has been ridiculous and like I said it's a balancing act between you know what ideas would work best with the series and I don't know I mean you can't please everybody right you can't please everybody but overall I think no matter what we do whether it's using the trading block not making any trades at all or you know trading away some players uh, it's probably not going to help too much because like I've said the players that we're trading away, like Walter McIntyre, for example, has very little trade value. I might get a fourth out of that. Odds are, with that fourth round pick, do we draft anything that's incredible? Probably not. I mean, fourth round, you're looking at a medium top nine at best, on average. Which, in this series, yes, can be nice, but in the grand scheme of things, is that player going to turn into a game changer for this series probably not we have we have seen high um high top nine potential guys turn into something decent but for the most part you kind of know whether or not certain players are going to pan out and i mean geez there's been a lot of debate too as far as the players i'm taking in the draft with a lot of you guys saying like oh if they show up as ahl potential they're actually this and I hear you guys when you know I've seen those comments and I get what you're saying. But man, have there been so many occasions in past series and just over the years playing this game, not even, you know, putting the, you know, making videos. Man, I am just off my game right now. I am off my game. 
It's tough to try and make concise points when you're trying to make a point about multiple different topics as you try to just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think you guys get it, though. As far as the whole, you know, the players that we draft and everything, I just try to go off of who we actually have information on, which is tough because then I'm putting stock into the scouting, hopefully working, which doesn't always happen. I don't know, man. I don't know. Regardless, regardless of all that, of how we handle the actual draft itself, regardless of how we handle trading, I think we're going to end up in the same spot in this series one way or another. Now, as far as the draft goes, too, for the most part, we have hit with the players that we've selected. It's been few and far between where we haven't draft, you know, where we've drafted someone who wasn't kind of, you know, just another player in that bracket. For example, oftentimes we'll take a medium top nine guy in the third round, and then you look at who everyone else is drafting, and it tends to be players of the same caliber. With the exception of goaltenders, of course, because, my God, like every goalie has the potential to be absolutely ridiculous, apparently. Even if their trade value is a little bit worse. But I think I've rambled on long enough about that. But I'd be lying if I said I haven't been sitting here for a while, just before recording this episode, just racking my brain about how to handle this, whether it be the draft itself, whether it be trading. Too, probably too much thought into it for a YouTube series, if I'm being honest. Way too much time and energy just invested in worrying about, am I making the right choice? Am I making the wrong choice? It's... At the end of the day, it's a YouTube series. It's meant to be entertaining. So I try not to overthink it, but that tends to happen. And continues to happen as I sit here and talk about overthinking. <laughs> but to be honest, I have nothing else to talk about as we sim through this. I could, as I've mentioned before, you know, put in jump cuts. But again, why? Why? In a way, I like the challenge of just trying to talk for an hour straight without pausing and see just how how much can I avoid the ums and the ahs while I, you know, try to think of something else or the you knows. I'm I'm not great at avoiding those, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Hadobin's up to an 85. Oh my god. Let's go best lines really quick. It did put him on the top line. Beautiful. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see. Hadobin on the top line. Quirk still an 89 overall, but look at that, man. Anything could happen. 925 save percentage. That's insane. Down in the AHL, I'm just going to go best lines and take Nottenen and Budish out of the lineup again. But back on track, I do like the challenge of just trying to talk for an hour and trying to keep it interesting and trying to... Like I said, avoid weird, you know, ums and ahs to extend things out. It's it's a challenge. It's a challenge, and I like a good challenge. But as we continue on with the sim here, we do have 22 wins, which isn't bad. But we're at the stage in the series where I'm almost disappointed that it's only 22 wins. <laughs> because with our goaltending the way it is, with two very strong defensemen, we just beat Ottawa 9-1 to for the record. <laughs> oh my god. I, I'm almost expecting too much out of this team. By the way, Hershey, 27 wins. Not too shabby. Of course, their goaltending is ridiculous for the AHL level as well. And of course, after beating Ottawa, we lose three straight games. But I think I'm I think I'm expecting a little bit too much from the Caps, from the main team. I expect us to make the playoffs this year, which is pretty stupid to say considering if you look at our bottom 6, there's nobody over an 80 overall unless somebody's progressed. But with our goaltending and with that Nearly elite level defensive pairing. Like, we probably have a better top defensive pairing than some of the other teams in the league. Just because, of course, it's a fantasy draft series. And you never know how the computer is going to handle things. 
So we could be better set up. Better, you know, better, well, how to phrase this? We could be more well-structured than other teams in the league. I need to stop recording so late. <laughs> I really do. I really do. Actually, I don't even know what time it is. I think it's... I think it's midnight-ish. I've been up since 5.30 a.m. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. Because we're here. We're simming through this season. And damn it, if we don't find success, <laughs> which... It, it's starting to look like we won't. More losses than wins, at least through February and the end of January. But if we don't find success in the regular season... With Hershey, we could find success in the postseason. And then there's always the draft. And we are actually right up at the trade deadline. I think my dog just sneezed from across the room. I wonder if that picked up. <laughs> I'm so paranoid. Like, what's going to pick up on the mic? Is the rain outside going to pick up on the mic? Is this awful chair going to pick up on the mic? Is my dog sneezing on the other side of the room going to pick up on the mic? And I'll never know until I edit all this back. But Yuri Hadobin in 86 overall. Good lord. And he could be a sniper too if you look at those stats. That is, that is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Fun. Good thing is I did just get a new filter so I can kind of pronounce the f of the F's. As opposed to going really light on it and having some people think I'm saying fantastic, as in a van or vans, the shoe, which I'm not. <laughs> anyway, the trade, de I don't think I set up the trade, de uh, the trade block exactly how people wanted me to. <laughs> I did kind of rush through that. But as far as potentially trading people, I don't know, do I want to, do I want to, like, because for centers, it would be, it would be McIntyre, but he's a 75, so I might as well keep him down in Hershey, just to be there, and then I could let go of him at the end of the season. Of course, we do have a lot of low potential guys on this roster, so there are definitely players I could get rid of. Oh, that's the tough thing. But like I said, seeing that comment of if I trade people there's, and you recoup picks, it's not exactly a punishment for mix, you know, for missing out on a pick. And that was a very good point. That was a very good point. So, despite despite my better judgment, I think for now we're just going to hold off and leave the team the same. There are some players who might suffer as far as their progression as far as their progression goes because they're not playing. But I'm I'm willing to sacrifice here. And after all, most of the players have low potential anyway. So the odds of them actually becoming anything are you know, pretty slim to begin with. So we'll keep cruising along here. We are already in March, making good time. Damn good time. In this episode. Of course the Start of the episode, there weren't too many, you know. Ah, damn it, I said you know. I try not to. But there weren't too many breaks having to set up the team. The team was already good to go. We didn't have to make any trades, or at least chose not to make any trades. So the start of the episode went pretty quickly. Now, the draft might be a different story, as it looks like we'll be hitting the draft sooner rather than later. As we continue to lose games, we have picked up 32 wins on the year as Hadobin goes down to injury. We'll just go best lines. That's fine by me. That'll get Winquist back on the top line, which may be pretty helpful. If we were to win the majority of our games at this point, we honestly might make it. But that is looking, that is looking pretty slim. Now, as far as who I want to scout out here, two weeks each. I think we'll go Russia, Sweden, Finland, two weeks each. And, of course, goaltending, we still don't have to worry about, which is nice. Marmonland not becoming as good as we thought he might be. If anything was beneficial for us in this series, and especially, too, with the uncertainty 
of trading players. Definitely helpful. I still, though, I still feel as though trading has to be a part of this series, but maybe the idea of you can't, you know, if it's a fourth round pick and you want to trade him, you can only get a fifth round pick at best, as opposed to just doing a one for one deal with the highest draft pick you can get. Maybe that's the better way to handle it. I don't know. You, you guys will let me know down in the comments again. And again, I'll contemplate all the feedback and we'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Despite the fact we're in 2025 in this series, we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. And it's not the most urgent matter to have to clear up. We might hit 40 wins. Can we please hit 40 wins? Please beat Pittsburgh. Please? Please? Hey, 40 wins. It won't... Oh my god, we made the playoffs. Oh my god, we made the playoffs. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. I didn't think 40 wins would be enough. We made the playoffs. Holy god, are you kidding me? And the best part is I have to sim through them. I don't want to cut the video short because then you guys would know for sure, oh shit, something happened. We made the playoffs. Are you kidding me? All right, well, hold on. I'm going to I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible so we can actually sim through here. Nolan Patrick had 98 points. Oh my god. 84 for Svechnikov, 54 for the rookie Hadobin. James is a 90. 43 points. Oh my god. How? How did we make the playoffs? It had to have been the goaltending. I mean, obviously Nolan Patrick factored in. Steven Quirk, a 927. Oh my god. And Ottinger, in fairness, a 910. Wow. We actually made the playoffs. Unreal. Unreal. Did Nolan Patrick? He did. He led the league in points. Riley Tufty, the only other guy to break 90. Nolan Patrick with 71 assists on the year. 50 goals for Tufty. Wow. We actually... I didn't think we would, man. I thought it would have taken 45 wins. We finished in the first wildcard spot, beating Carolina on tiebreaker. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's insane. That's mind-boggling to me. We finished. Where did we where did we finish? 15th, 16th? Wow. 18th in the league on 87 points, but it was enough to make the playoffs. That is crazy. Goals four per game. Where was our offense? Down towards the bottom, probably. Yeah, but still closer to the middle. Closer to the middle and goals against per game. Same thing, and at least not in the bottom 5. Wow, we're, we're in the playoffs. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And again, let's do it. Let's go. Of course, I'm not going to care about the lines and all that. We're just going to go best lines now. And funny enough, Ahonen has progressed. We're just going to go best lines. Svechnikov is a 90. Let's go for it, man. Let's go for it. As the thunder roars in the background, if I lose power... If I lose power, I will lose my mind. So let's go, because now I'm anxious. I should just save. I should just save. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm not going to drag it out like I do uh, traditionally with Rebuilding Hockey Town or a Nation United. We will go into this menu or, you know, into the actual simulation. But we're just going to go one period at a time. First period, nothing happens. Second period, Robbie Fabry scores. Third period, Svechnikov made it a game. But Kosti scores for New Jersey. We dropped the first game by the score of 2-1. to one. At this point, I'm just happy we made the playoffs, man. I'm scared that we're outside of the lottery. Absolutely, for the first time, we are outside of the lottery. So, it's nice. You know, we made the playoffs. If we could just win one game, though, that would be icing on the cake. First period here in game two. Well, uh, Svechnikov scored. That's good. Conley scored in the second. 
Costi scores again. 5-2 final for the Devils in Game 2. And Malakoff goes down to injury. Let's go best lines, and actually I will call up somebody from Hershey. Hershey well on their way to the playoffs with 45 wins. Not too shabby there. I just can't believe we made the playoffs. I never expected that. Never expected that. As the season went on, you could kind of tell, you know, through January, February, into March, more losses than wins. It wasn't looking too good. But we pulled it off, man. We pulled it off. We made the postseason. Now, let's figure this out. Defenseman, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, so yeah, we got to call up Ploof or Goring. Who had the better season? Who had the better season? Of course, it's not going to show their stats. Shit. Um, let's let's call up Goring. Yeah, let's call up Goring. So that works. And then forwards, are there anybody? So 76 is the highest. Are there anybody? Is there anybody is what I meant to say. So we'll call up Goring. And again, we'll just go best lines for both teams. And we'll get back into simming. <laughs> Game three. Against the Devils. All that... All that misery... For this franchise. But they finally have... A home playoff game. Game 3 against the Devils. This is the one to win. First period... Winquist, the opening goal on Tristan Jari of all people. Second period, Robbie Fabry. Third period... Scoreless overtime. And Nolan Patrick. Who else... Nolan Patrick, the overtime game winner in the Washington Capitals, have won a playoff game for the first time in this series. By the way, I didn't even point out that we beat Toronto 10-1 to at the beginning of the month. How bad are the Leafs, apparently? One of you guys will go back and look at their... Oh, shit. Well, I didn't mean to hit auto fix roster. And it sent down Breen anyway. So that's fine by me. So if I go best lines again, it does put Malakoff back into the lineup. Okay, so I will send down Goring again, which is fine. So we have Goring, and we'll call Breen back up. Not like it matters cap-wise. We're, we're pretty good. But like I was going to say, one of you guys will tell me, oh, well, actually Toronto finished like second in the NHL. That, that wasn't my point. They were bad on that given night. That is my point. Game four. Let's do this. Playoff hockey. Crazy. Crazy. First period. Down 2 nothing. Dessert calls and Taylor Hall. Second period is scoreless. And third period, Svechnikov. <laughs> He's putting up a fight. But we lose game four by the score of 3-1. I'm fine with it, guys. I am fine with it. We at least won a game. We won a game. We made the postseason, and we beat the Devils at least once. That's all that matters to me. Progress. That is what this was about. First period here. Son or hold on, it wasn't Sontag. Ah, somebody somebody told me how to pronounce it. It was Zone Tog. Zone Tog. Yeah. That's what it was. Kind of. I'm I'm butchering it, man. I'm sorry. Zone Tog. <laughs> it says Sontag, man. And Nolan Patrick at the goals. Second period. Oh my god, we're not done yet. Svechnikov and Hadobin. And my god, what is going on? <laughs> Boys and Svechnikov. Andre Svechnikov is determined to carry this team to victory. The first line, the three stars. Not only have we made the playoffs, not only have we won a game, we've beaten the Devils twice, including a six-nothing victory on their home, on their ice, on the road. Crazy game six. There's no way we force game seven, but let's go. First period, goal apiece. Hadobin with another goal. Second period. Ken Janes, third period. Oh my God, we're going to game seven. We are going to game seven. Hadobin and Patrick, the first line, 
dragging this carcass of a team. I can't wait to see Svechnikov's point total. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. And we have forced Game 7 against the New Jersey Devils. Now, we are going to pay attention to Hershey here. It is Game 4. If they lose, they're out. So let's pay attention to them just for a moment. Just for a moment. As Goring gets a goal, and then they blow it in the third period. All right, well, the Hershey Bears at least made the playoffs, but they get bounced in the first round. Pretty disappointing. Game 7. Did you ever imagine we'd be saying that in this episode? Game 7. Let's go. First period is scoreless. Second period. Ah, Taylor Hall. And we'll go. We'll go live for this one. Third period of Game 7. Taylor Hall has the lone goal. Can the Capitals pull off a miracle? An absolute miracle. It's not looking likely. <laughs> it's not looking likely. Come on. Last second goal. Nah. Boone Jenner, the empty netter. The miracle run ends. A 33 save shutout for Tristan Jari. Damn. But what a run. What a run. That is Maple Leaf esque. Of course, they didn't go to game seven, but you get my point. We put up one hell of a fight. We put up one hell of a fight. We made it to the playoffs, and we took the Devils to a decisive Game 7. <laughs> well, we said progress was the goal. I, th I think we achieved a little bit of progress in today's episode. What is, the, what is in store for this team in the future with Quirk between the pipes? Nolan Patrick led the league in scoring despite the fact that our bottom six is mostly 70s. There's at least 180 in there now with Conley. I cannot believe that just happened. So it's a good thing we made good time early on in the episode because that little postseason run put us right back on track about to the 40-minute mark where we'll be hitting the draft and this draft is going to be interesting as, of course, for the first time, we are outside the lottery. We didn't get any of those extra draft picks. The trade block didn't exactly work out. But again, if I were to set it up a different way, it just would have resulted in them sending me a million trades. So we had to do it the way we did it. But the Rangers and the Cleveland Monsters end up winning the Stanley Cup. Can I get one more scouting session in there before taking a look at all the awards? Yes, I can. Awesome. And that'll be the Liga Defense. And we'll go ahead and stop the sim. Let's go ahead and take a look at these stats, particularly the playoff stats. We pretty much scrolled through all the other stats. We'll take a look at the playoff tree. The Rangers beat the Winnipeg Jets in six. The Monsters beat the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, so at least the Hershey Bears lost to the Team that went to the final from their conference. But let's take a look at the player stats. We will take a look at our team first. Andre Svechnikov had 11 points in 7 games. 9 points for Patrick Hadobin with 7. But you can see the secondary scoring was the issue, as you would expect. So I can't, I can't be mad. I can't complain. The secondary scoring failed us. Because we don't have any secondary scoring. But we're, we're close, man. I'm not saying we're close to a cup. But should we expect to see our first playoff series victory within the next season or two? I'd say so. I'd say so. Especially after what we witnessed here. But let's take a look at the Stanley Cup winning New York Rangers with Leon Dreisaitl, Alex Nylander, Brady Kachuk. Al Cole, Paulie Yarby, my God, some big time names here on the Rangers. I can see, I can see why well, a couple of weak points, but overall a pretty strong looking team that ended up winning the cup. The defense was just all around solid, and Jorn Van Pottelberg led them to victory. Their defense, you know, they didn't have that ace, that true top two defenseman. 
but they were very well rounded. So again, I can see why the Rangers were able to win the cup. Player awards, we knew, we knew we were getting at least one. Nolan Patrick wins the Art Ross. He also wins the Hart Trophy. The Norris didn't go to Ken James this season, but maybe soon. It goes to Morgan Riley. The Lady Bing also goes to Nolan Patrick. Yuri Hadobin is the Calder winner. We are just, oh my God, we're racking up the hardware here. Todd Smythe goes to Morozov. I didn't look at their goal. No, I did look at their goaltenders. Morozov was the defenseman. The Vezina goes to Gibson. The Jennings to Germain. Calvin DeHaan, the Masterton. The Selkie to Trocek. Nolan Patrick, the Ted Lindsay. Tufty, the Rocket Richard. What a season for this team. Down at the AHL level, Yarvinen, the MVP of the AHL. Not too shabby at all. Will we get any other any other hardware aside from that? We will not. But Yarvinen, the MVP of the AHL, Nolan Patrick, confirmed to be the greatest player in the history of the NHL for carrying this team like he did. What a season. It sucks to get eliminated in the first round, but it's such a different feeling as compared to, say, rebuilding Hockey Town where you win 60 games and get bounced in the first round. We expected to get bounced in the first round, so it's obviously not the end of the world. It's a sign of progress. Slowly but surely, this team is turning that page, and we are going to be that much closer to success heading into next season when you factor in certain player progression. Now, the big debate will be especially to now that we made the playoffs and we know that we're outside of the lottery for the very first time, the big debate will be, should I have just made trades as I did in the prior episode? And maybe, <laughs> that's that's really all I can say, maybe I should have made at least a move or two. But at the end of the day, I, I think we'll be, I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be all right. There's really no point in me looking at the big board because it doesn't matter. Let's just sim to our pick. We'll see who's still available as the Bruins are willing to trade pick. Ah, sh I should have edited the trade block. This is going to be an issue. This is going to be an issue. And it's my mistake. Okay, at least the game went easy on me with those picks. So no franchise, just a couple of medium elites. So, I mean, I'm sure they're good. But compared to one Yuri Hadobin, I'm not exactly shedding a tear that we're missing out. Now, as far as who we take here, again, you guys have mentioned that someone like Arkhipov, Yell, would be pretty decent. Sparks as well. But then you factor in players that we actually have information on. Parento, Gaucher, I imagine that's pronounced. You have Loktyanov as a defenseman. I think the decision is pretty obvious here, though. It's not that we necessarily need another sniper, but as far as player types, you know, there are certain snipers that just don't develop offensively but turn into a defensive player, and we can e easily change the player type. So it is more a matter of taking the best player available. And Nick Tutu might be the guy. He's 17, so his overall will be pretty low. But we could take the chance... On Vyacheslav Arkhipov, the Russian, 18 years old. You also have the Belgian, Rudy Yell, 19 years old. 19 years old, not a bad, not a bad idea. Man, it's, it's, it's tough to say. It is tough to say. I do want to take a forward, because we do need that extra forward help, obviously. And I think Tutu's the guy, but do I take a risk with Arkhipov or Yell? Of course, Tutu would be a bit of a ways away, and wouldn't be allowed to play down in Hershey for a few years. So maybe this is the right time. Maybe this is the right time to take a risk and go with Yell or Arkhipov. Maybe this is the right time. And Yell is 19, so his overall would be even higher. Oh boy, do I take the risk here? Do I take the risk, or do I just go with 2-2? Two -two? Because it would be nice to get that immediate help. Absolutely. Tough to say. 
Yell's a center as well, so that could be pretty valuable. You know what? <clears throat> I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to take the risk, and we're going to pick Rudy Yell. Please don't make me regret it. Medium top six isn't bad for a 16th overall. But who did we pat? All right, so the goalie was good, but of course we had a feeling. Ah, uh, thank God I didn't take Arkhipov. Who else did we pass up on here? Loktyanov. Sparks, also medium top six. Parento. And 2-2. So, yeah, I'd say we made the right choice. The risk paid off. As we get the guy that could go down to the AHL. He is 19, so his overall should be higher. He's a 67, not as high of an overall as I would have wanted. Of course, his trade value is just non-existent. Absolutely non-existent, as is the case with most of our players. But overall, not a bad pickup with Rudy Yell. Let's get through the rest of this draft. Carlson has been traded. I wonder if that's Eric. I don't really care, but I do wonder. I do wonder. So here we go. Second round pick. Who's it going to be? Now we do have... Quite a few options. Again, a lot of players that we just don't have any information on, which kind of sucks. We have Vaclav Bonka, who's Czech. All right. Tony Crawford. We have Marion Antons as an option. Gabriel Andreoff or Gabriel Andreoff. We have Edward Boro, Dmitry Yakupov, who we actually have information on, or Donald Montador. Now... I'd say the non-CHL players have a bit of an advantage here, so that would be Bunka, Crawford, Antons, Andreoff, and Yakupov. Question is, who do we go with? And do we go with Yakupov? I, as far as players we, who we have scouted out, his potential is the highest. His potential is the highest. So I think I think he's the guy. I think he's the guy. Again, Monador could be good. Crawford could be good. We don't have the information on them. We do have the information on Dmitry Yakupov. Now, he is a power forward, so it's a bit dangerous. And sometimes power forwards just don't seem to develop. But let's let's take the risk. Dmitry Yakupov, low top six? Yep. Okay. So it's not awful. Crawford was medium top nine. Bunka, same thing. You could argue... What potential is better? Low top six or medium top nine? They're roughly the same thing. I mean, obviously there's a big difference between high top nine and low top six. But overall, not too bad of a pick. Again, I don't expect us to get you know a major gem in this draft. But it is, you know, the hope is to find somebody at least half useful. Now, sticking with the center theme. We don't necessarily need these defensemen. The obvious pick here would be Raimo Rajala, the Finnish center. Other options, Kale Erzberg, 19 years old, or the American Byron Price. Honestly, I don't think we could really go wrong with either, if I'm honest here. I mean, Erzberg's 19, so his overall might be a little bit higher but again, Rajala, centers, pretty damn valuable. So for that reason, for that reason, for that reason, we are going with Rajala, and he is low top nine. Erzberg, same thing. Let's see if I regret that. And Price, same thing. So we made a pretty good pick. I mean, for forwards, I mean, Bolesky would have been nice to have as a defenseman, but we already have a log jam of defense that we're going to have to clear up in this offseason. Now, who do we go with here? Who do we go with here? Harrison would be the obvious pick. David Harrison. I knew a David Harrison growing up, so that's interesting. I mean, that's a common name, I guess. Dave Waite. If that was Doug, I'd draft him immediately. We have Hugo Vauclair and Ivan Chistov. We have a Blackburn, Joe Blackburn, defenseman, or Ruslan Brzgalov. Now, again, as far as who we have information on, you'd probably say Harrison, despite him being a CHL player. 
and as far as players go, I mean high bottom six to low top nine, is about as good as we're going to get. It's pretty much our best option. We do have a Laurent St. Louis and a Trent Forrest, but our best options do look like CHL players moving forward, which is fine. We at least took some non-CHL players that could go to Hershey if needed in the next season. So, let's go with David Harrison. People might be saying Vauclair, Chistoff. He's going to be low top nine, maybe medium at best. And there you go, medium top nine. I'm very content with that pick. We'll sim to my next pick, and then I'll scroll back through the fourth round just to double check. See if I made a mistake at all. I don't feel like I did, though. I feel like we're in a pretty decent spot. Weight, same potential. There's, I mean, yeah, there's really nobody that we missed out on. You know, things are looking pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. All things considered, this has been a successful draft, given the fact that we, of course, made the playoffs. But, oh boy. Now, right here, we don't have information on anybody, and league interest is pretty much nil for all of these players. So, Puninovs, 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 Nikolai, <laughs> projected to go in the seventh round, so we could hold off. We don't have many reliable picks from here on out. Some league interest, low league interest. It is tough to say. There is Fukale, high AHL top four, so what's that going to translate to, Right. What's that going to translate to? We do have an Enforcer and Bernard Goulet. 6'6 six, six Enforcer. Damn. There's a South Korean? Jeff Holmes from South Korea. <laughs> wow. Do I just... You know what? I'm just going to take him for the laughs, I think. I mean, Owens might be decent. Brock Owens. Exact AHL. So, I mean, that's what he's going to be. High AHL top two... So Colton Adams might be seven, or would probably be like low seventh D, maybe medium at best. Do I go with the joke pick or still a somewhat semi-serious pick like Parise, Stevenson, Fukale? But that really concerns me that it's top four AHL, not top two. Ah oh, man, tough to say. Tough to say. I've never seen. I don't think I've ever seen a South Korean. Put into the game though. <laughs> and of course his name is Jeff. Do we take uh do we take the South Korea? I mean he's gonna be terrible. He's gonna be terrible. You know, I think I think I still have to be serious about this guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And for that reason For that reason, it's what the fifth round? So we have Parise. I need to call my timeout. This pick's taking longer than I thought it would, I'm sorry. So let me call my time out here. And we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out. No room for jokes for joke picks just yet. So let's go with either Parise, Stevenson. How far down can we go here? Parise, Stevenson, Lankow, Suter. Hmm. So Alan Lankow, 19. Alright, Suter's 18. Played for Guelph. We have Colton Adams, who is AHL eligible right off the bat. Stevenson as well. He's 17, so he's going to be a bit of a way away, ways away. Hmm. And then Parise. How old was Parise? 18. All right. Let's go. Let's go with... It's weird to me that Fukale has high league interest, though, so it makes you wonder... High AHL top four. Like, at best, what's he going to be? That's that. See, I legitimately don't know. You would think he'd only be, like, medium AHL top two with that. You, I mean, at least I would think. So, let's see. I, uh, this pick isn't as difficult as I'm making it out to be, and I apologize for that. I do. I'm going to go with Colton Adams. We don't necessarily need a defenseman, but it just seems like the safe pick. And let's see here. Low 7th. I was hoping for medium 7th. We'll send to my next pick. We'll scroll back and see if I made a mistake, which I very well could have. Very well could have, but that's okay. 
That's okay. So let's see. Who else was available? Uh, Holmes. Same thing. So maybe I should have taken him just for the laughs. Fukale, medium AHL top two. There you go. Goulet would have, wouldn't have been a terrible option. St. Denis would have been a better pick. Parise. Well, there you go. That was a mistake of a pick. Should have gone with Parise. Should have gone with Parise or Stevenson. That's all right. We haven't missed on too many picks, but that, that was a mistake. Parise, Suter, Stevenson, all would have been better picks. That's all right. We haven't missed on too many picks in general in this series, so I'm all right with it. As far as the sixth round goes, I mean, my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this defenseman here just to make sure we end up with him because he looks like a bit of a steal for someone projected in the seventh round. Low tops, or yeah, low top six in the seventh round. I mean, I'm good with that. Of course, we took him in the sixth, but I mean, projected for the seventh round. I'm all right with that. Will he become anything in this series? Probably not. But he was at least worth taking. And for our last pick here, for our last pick, and it's going to be one of these three guys. Who's it going to be? Serge Dubow. All right, 18. We have Jay Cadre, played for Sarnia. And Louis O.D. Marcheseau. Right. <laughs> I don't think it matters. We're going to take the center. We're going to take the center. Just, you know, you can never have too many good centers. So we'll take Marcheseau. Low bottom six isn't terrible. Kuleshoff ended up being medium seventh. So the back half of that draft, kind of iffy. But overall, all things considered, this season was more about the progression of this team as we made the postseason for the very first time. That is what this year was about. And we will try to quickly make it through the re-sign phase. I might have a bit of a, an issue, though, in not being able to sign everybody. And, of course, we are going to need a contract or two. I mean, ideally, we'd have veterans on those extended deals. But... Or not necessarily extended deals, but ridiculous deals. So let's see. Marmonland, we'll look to bring him back. Kolosov as well. Defensively, we have Moroza. He's an 83, so we'll keep him. We have Ola Eriksson. And again, I'm sorry if I'm just, like, breezing through this way too quickly, but it's just to get it done. We have Ron Kell. He needs to be re-signed. Hey Duke, someone that we could potentially let go of. Hood as well. A campa, we can let go of those, so that's good. That'll free up a contract spot. Hood, someone else that we could potentially trade. A lot of guys like that <laughs> that don't have much value and probably won't progress. But again, I look forward to another bout of not necessarily debate, but at least suggestions in the comments for how we should handle it. Because there are certainly moves we could make draft picks that we could recover that wouldn't exactly make this series feel cheap, but would would help out. I mean, like I said, you look at the caliber of players that we're ending up with in the draft. I mean, outside of the top 10, it's, it's a crapshoot as far as whether or not you end up with anybody of any any decent value and most of the time the answer is going to be no <laughs> most of the time you're not going to end up with players that are going to become anything and while the, like the low top nine potential guys do have some value for us in this series they're still not likely to become anything they had they had really good value for us early on in the series but now we're in the stage where we need to be getting nhl level guys and that's going to be difficult, extremely difficult even, when we're making the playoffs. So a lot of it depends on progression. And a lot of it depends on getting that crazy out-of-nowhere progression. Where someone with, a tr you know, someone with a potential just turns into what they shouldn't, in theory. That, if that can happen, we'll be in a good spot. But that is a pretty big if, as we will look to yeah, just double back and check. I think we're good to go aside from defense, right? Yeah, there we go. We left Hayduke, who would be traded if we move forward. 
You also have Hood. And the thing is, too, we could just go without signing certain players for you know a decent bit of time. So many ways to handle it. So many ways to handle it. Who knows, maybe there's a big enough handicap to just only be allowed to draft players as opposed to signing and trading. Maybe that's a big enough handicap and I should just be able to do whatever I want from here on out. Like I said, I still wouldn't pick a word. I don't know. It's up to you guys. It is up to you guys, but I think we are good to go. And with that, the start of the next episode, I'll just be able to sim straight through to the start of next season. Like I said, I can sign a veteran if I want to, to try and help alleviate some of the pressure we might face from the cap. 47 contracts, $42 million in cap space available. A lot of it just depends on what we want to do, although Yell and Harrison will definitely be signed. So maybe we'll hold off. A lot of it depends, though, guys, on just what we decide to do as far as trading goes. But I will come to a conclusive decision, and that is what we'll do moving forward, starting with the next episode. So let me know. I'll put all of it into thought, and we'll handle it from there starting in the next episode. But guys, that will do it for this episode of Draft to Glory, a histor simply historic episode as we made the playoffs for the first time and nearly walked away with our first ever postseason victory. That may just happen, though, sooner rather than later. But we'll have to wait until the next one to find out. So for now, if you have enjoyed this video, of course, make sure to hit that like button to help support the video and the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series and others. Follow me on to follow me on Tugi. Yeah, follow me on Tugi at Twitter24. <laughs> follow me on Twitter at Tugi24 and join the notification squad if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Draft of Glory.